Hi everyone, welcome to the introduction to the Oak CI system. What does Oak CI do for you? Oak CI actually tracks your project progress from the very beginning of the project to the very end of the project and serves as the official state record for the project as well. It automates all workflows based on OFCC forms and procedures, allows for improved project communication and collaboration, is now housed in the cloud so you can utilize any browsing tool, however Chrome is still recommended. The system now also includes DocuSign for OFCC administered projects, which minimizes the time spent in Oak CI. System Navigation there is some important browser information when using our system. We recommend using Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox as your browsers. These browsers will give you the best user experience in the system. When you're ready to navigate to Oak CI, you're going to pull up a new web browser and then type in the web address, ohio-unifier.oracleindustry.com slash blue door. Hit enter and it should take you to the sign-in page. One thing that you'll want to be aware of with this website is to make sure that your pop-up blocker is disabled for this site. If it's not disabled, you might find some limited functionality in the system. Let's go ahead and log in with our username and password. And then click sign in. Once you log into the system, you'll land on what's called your home page. You can see that by the little house up here in the upper left hand corner, and that home button is permanently located on the left hand side of your page. This home page allows you to see a couple different things. It allows you to see any projects down here where you have active tasks to complete. It allows you to see announcements from the Oak CI team. And then you can also see any project tabs that you currently have here at the top of your page. Next, we're going to click on Tasks for our home page. If you're on multiple projects, this page will come in handy. We're going to click Switch to Standard View over on the right-hand side of our page. And then we also need to change our view here to from Received in the Last 7 Days to All Tasks. Now we can see all tasks for any projects that we have access to. Once you change it to all tasks on your task homepage, then it will remain that way for all of the rest of your projects. To find your very specific project, we're going to open a new tab by clicking the plus sign. And then we can search by the project number or the project name. Click the magnifying glass over here on the right hand side to search and then it should pull up that project for you. If you find that you don't have access to the project, please contact the Oak CI support desk or your project manager. We're going to click the project to select it. And now we've gone from our system homepage to our very specific project homepage. What you'll notice on this homepage is that you also have some additional navigation options at the top. If you're on multiple projects, this might come in handy. I can see here that I am in the agency shell, and then I'm in Oak CI administration, and if I click the down arrow here, I can see any projects that are inside that organization. So there's another option for navigation. For our K-12 school district projects, you actually have a district level project as well as building level projects. So your district level project may be the Talawanda local school district, and your building level projects may be elementary one, high school one, elementary two, so on and so forth. So that's just an example. When we're in Oak CI, we can see here that I am now in my district level project. If I look below here, I can see my building projects down at the bottom, and to make that a little bit bigger, I can go over here to the small box next to the view screen to expand my view. So I'll go ahead and click that, and I can see that there are two building level projects within that district level project. When speaking about my district level project, these are always going to contain records regarding my professional service providers. So if I look in the district level project at the contract, I'm going to see any contracts for professional service providers, such as commissioning agents, or the architect, or an owner's agent. This is also where those pay requests will be housed for those providers. 
In order to find the building level projects within your district level project, the easiest way is to use this blue file path here at the top. So I can see that I'm in school facilities, district project, and then if I click this down arrow, I can choose one of my building projects to go to. Once I click that, I've now moved from my district level project into my building level project. That building level project is going to house all of the records related to your CMR or to your contractor. So if I go to logs here and I click on contract, then I'm going to be able to see any of those CMR or general contracting contracts. This is also where all pay requests for your CMR or your general contractor will be housed. From your project homepage, you can navigate to your work and information. In the main menu over here on the left hand side, we are going to use five different areas. Tasks, Notifications, Drafts, Document Manager, and Logs. Let's go ahead and click on Tasks. Once you click on Tasks, let's click on Switch to Standard View over on the right hand side. And then we can see a list of all of our tasks here. Now tasks are any work that comes to you for your review or your approval. You can preview your task details over here to the right hand side of the screen. And then if you wanted to open up a task, you can use the gear icon here to the left or you can simply double click it to open it up. Next, let's click on Notifications. Notifications are formerly known as Messages. Those are any records that you've been carbon copied on. You can leave these notifications here or you can delete them. Please note that Meeting Minutes will always be a notification. Next, let's click on Drafts. Drafts are any unfinished records that you have created and saved for later. And if you no longer need them, you can delete them out of your list. One quick note about drafts and timeout is the system will timeout after 60 minutes of inactivity and all of your unsaved work will be lost and there's also no warning given. So please use that save button at the top of your record and click that often to make sure that all of your work has been saved. Next, we're going to move down to document manager. You can go ahead and click on document manager and then documents. And we're going to switch to standard view by clicking switch to standard view on the right hand side of your screen. Document Manager houses all supporting documentation for your project. The utilization of Document Manager will differ based on your particular project. And for important information regarding how you should use Document Manager for your project, you can discuss that with your project coordinator or project manager. And you can also find job aids on our OFCC website. Now let's move down to Logs. And then let's click on a record. For example, let's click on Change Order. In Logs, we're going to switch to Standard View on the right-hand side of your screen. And then we can see an entire list of the change orders. So when we talk about Logs, Logs houses actually all of the records for your project. So that's your contract, your professional services agreement, your change orders, your amendments, uh, RFIs, design reviews, all of those records that are um, important to your construction project are going to be housed in logs. To view a specific record in the record type, you can go ahead and just click that record and then you can see a preview of that over on the right hand side of your screen. You can also see on the right hand side of your screen a very basic status of the record. This one says pending. And then if you click the workflow progress link at the top of the page and choose filter by all steps, you can actually see who did what with this record, who created it, who has completed it, what steps have been taken in this record, and when that was completed. Create a new record in logs. To create a new record in logs, we're going to choose the record type. In this example, I'm choosing change order, or you could choose contract modification. And then I'm going to click the create button and select a workflow if necessary. Once that record window comes up, what you'll notice is that OCI records work in a tabular format. So I can click the general tab, I can click the action details tab, and I can click this line item list tab to see different information about this record. I'm going to start with the general tab 
and fill out all required information. Required information is noted with a red asterisk. I'm going to select my contract reference. And then I'm going to fill out the other required fields. Please note that you must have all required fields filled out before you can send the record forward. I can add information to any of the other tabs. I can add any attachments as necessary by clicking Add Attachment and then choosing Unifier Folder to go to Document Manager or you can attach from my computer if that option is available. You can also add general comments to your record by clicking General Comments, adding a text comment to the record, clicking OK, and then closing the window. Now you'll notice that there's a little talking head down here at the bottom and those general comments will be visible to the next person in the record and will become a permanent part of this record as well. Now if I'm ready, I can go ahead and send my record forward. I'm going to click the Action Details tab. My workflow action submit has already been populated, so I'll just verify that. I can see that my two box has already been populated with who the records are going to go to next. And then I can go ahead and click Send. The people in the two box are now going to receive a task. Working with tasks. When you have a task to complete in OCI, you'll receive an email notification from Unifier to let you know that you have a task to complete in the system. This notification is going to tell you the project that it's in, it's going to tell you what type of record it is and the record number, and what it's been sent to you for. It will also tell you who it came from, what it's sent for, the project name, the record number, as well as the title. Then you can click the Unifier login link down here at the bottom to access the task. In order to begin working on this record, I'll click Accept Task. Then I'll click the General tab to see if any additional information needs to be added. Here I need a change order number, so I'll go ahead and add that in. The rest of the information is simply a review. Once I've reviewed all of the information, I'm going to go ahead and send this record on to the next step by clicking Action Details, choosing my Workflow Action Accept, and then sending the record forward. For additional reference materials and other recorded videos, please visit our website at ofcc.ohio.gov, click on the Oak CI tab, and choose the appropriate training for your project. If you have any questions, you can always contact the Oak CI support desk at oakci at ofcc.ohio.gov or 614-644-2211.